In this video, I'm going to talk about three particular examples of vector fields, the electric field, the gravitational field, and the radiation field. I'm going to talk about them together because they all have almost exactly the same mathematical form. In each case, the field strength, which is a vector, is equal to some constant, 1 over the modulus of the radius vector squared, times the unit vector in the radial direction. So what does that mean? Well, we're always trying to work out the field caused by something, which might be a charge or a mass or a radiation source, at some point nearby. And the r vector is the distance from whatever is causing the field to the point at which you're measuring it. So what this is telling us is there's a constant, then there's that distance, which is mod r, squared, and it's 1 over that, so as you get further away it gets weaker, and because it's got the r hat, the unit vector, that means it's pointing in a radial direction. Now for electric field, we've seen this before. So for electric field, the electric field tells us, by definition, what the force will be on a charge of 1 coulomb. So the electric field, the constant here, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and then it's just what we've seen above, 1 over r squared unit vector r. Or there's a gravitational field. Now the gravitational field is defined as the force that would be applied by gravity on a 1 kilogram mass. So the gravitational field is equal to a constant, which in this case is g m. Ah, I see I've missed out the charge here. The constant here should include a charge of whatever's causing it. Okay, here it's gm, and it's just the same. 1 over mod r squared r hat. Another type of field you probably haven't encountered before is a radiation field. Let's say you have a, uh, a light bulb or a star. It's radiating a certain power, which is called the luminosity L. And that radiation, those photons spread out in all directions. The individual photons don't get weaker as they travel, but they get more spread out. So the number of photons hitting you if you're a long way away per second is going to be much less than the number that would hit you if you're very close. That's why far away things look faint. So we can call a vector of the intensity at some point, which is the amount of radiation traveling somewhere, and that would equal the luminosity over 4 pi, it's the constant, 1 over mod r squared r hat. So as you can see, they're all very much the same. One difference I should put in, we should probably put a minus sign there for the gravitational field, because the gravitational field doesn't point away, it points inwards. So they're all very, very similar. A constant, 1 over r squared, and then the r vector. And there's actually a fundamental reason why they're all so similar. For the case of light, it's pretty easy to see that all the photons are going to be flying straight out from the center. And you'd also imagine that all the photons that go through a shell here must also go through a shell there and also go through a shell there. As the shells get bigger, the area, area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, goes up as r squared. So the number of photons per unit area goes down as r squared. That's why, when things are far away, you see fewer photons per unit area. It's not that there are fewer photons, there are just as many photons a long way away as there are close, they just spread over a bigger volume. So that's why you get a 1 over r squared r here. And it turns out the same thing applies here. Electric charge is actually carried by virtual photons, quantum particles jumping backwards and forwards, and they obey the inverse square law, just like uh, the real photons coming from a uh, star. So there's actually a fundamental reason why these all look the same.